Space Motorist. This is Space Cafe Radio. Your channel about trends, cool people, and real conferences. I, Thorsten, publisher of Space Watch for Global, and our team has been visiting the Space Tech Expo 2021 in Bremen. I had the opportunity of talking with Nikki Finnegan, business communication officer at Skyrora, a very cool rocket company in Scotland. Hi, Nikki. How are you doing today, a few days after the in-person show in Bremen? I'm doing really great, thank you. It's nice to be fully recovered from all the traveling, but it was a great experience and I'm already looking forward to next year. Please let our audience know, what are you doing at Skyrora? I've just started working at Skyrora a few months ago. I'm a business communications officer and my job involves the external engagement and the marketing for the company. Two weeks ago, COP26 finished in Glasgow and Skyrora has been part of it. What have you done there and how can you, Skyrora, help tackling the climate crisis. It's, it's great. I think that COP26 has been a very good opportunity to start some discussions surrounding climate action in the space sector as well. We tried to make a presence at as many events as we could. And so some of our team members attended a panel for Scottish International Week delivered during COP. We were also speaking at One Carbon World's Promoting Action and Change during COP26. And here locally in Edinburgh, Katie Miller was on a panel for space sustainability at the Ignite Space Conference. So these are a few of the events that we attended throughout the conference, but on our own social media channels, we also initiated an independent campaign and we shared several resources related to each theme of COP26, including mobilizing finance, gender, science and innovation to connect a bit more with our followers and start some conversations that were on a smaller scale too. And then as far as the actual actions we're taking after COP26, we've got several sort of sustainability initiatives at the company, and we try to embed those on the technical and design level so that we're not greenwashing after the fact, so to speak. So one of those is our mobile launch complex. This is sort of this construction of shipping containers that can fit all launch infrastructure and ship wherever we're actually launching. And once we leave, There's no environmental impact to the surrounding habitat, so it's very good for the environment. And it's also beneficial for us because it's quite an efficient way to launch. So that's one of the things that we've got going on. Let me dive into that a bit deeper here. So what are your company's approaches to sustainability in general? How is that also reflected in your work? I know that sustainability is a huge thing for you, what I think is great, but rocket science and environment usually does not match so well with each other. Definitely. I think that's a really good question. As I said, we try to embed it into every process that we have on the business and technical side of the company. So another way that we're trying to do that is through our eco-friendly fuel, which is called Ecotheme. Um, and it's actually a non-cryogenic, which is made from plastic waste that is typically found in the landfills and oceans. So it's really valuable for us because it's a negative feedstock and unfortunately it is a resource that's quite prevalent, but also it's great for the surrounding environment and we love the idea of cleaning up as we're actually launching. So that's one of the things that we're doing as well. We've also got one other technology that we're developing at the moment and, and it's called the Space Tug. So it's an orbital transfer vehicle, which is essentially a robotic arm that will be deployed in the upper stage of our orbital vehicle and it can deorbit detrimental space junk because we're trying to kind of take away as we're deploying additional satellites to manage that very prevalent space junk issue at the moment. Let me ask to clarify that. You're launching a satellite with your rocket and then your upper stage has a robotic arm built in that you carry to grab some space debris. What is in your neighborhood? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Our rocket will be launching into low Earth orbit and, you know, through the process of deploying satellites, that we're initially intending to launch. We're going to try and deorbit additional satellites to make sure that we're keeping a balance between what we're putting up and what we're actually taking down. Because, you know, with big companies like SpaceX who are launching just an exponential amount of satellites in the coming years, it's really important to invest in these technologies now so it doesn't get out of hand. That sounds super complex in addition to what you already try to achieve with launching a satellite. What is rocket science at the end? Yeah, I think it's something that we're very much in the research and development stage of, but we, we're trying to do as much as we can now, as I said. And, you know, it's something that in the long term will be very beneficial. And although it may be complicated and something that a lot of companies are trying to do, but nobody's found the exact solution yet, 
I think it's important to at least try and kind of see what happens and continue to invest in that research and development. One of the things that was discussed at COP26 actually was mobilizing finance towards innovation. And I think that's super important to do just now before we reach that point of no return. Great. Wonderful initiative. Thanks for Thank pointing you. that out. We at Earth Space Watch Global publish your news about the launch agreements with Zaxofort, Space Pores on the Shetland Islands, I think a few weeks ago. Why is that important for you? I mean, you have a number of MOUs with other launch complex, with Iceland, with, with GOSA in place also. Yeah, I think every launch agreement is quite important for us in its own unique way. But relating to the Saxophone one in particular, it's very important to us to localize the launch supply chain for our demo orbital launch, because this will also be beneficial on a company level for our target of launching 16 launches per year by 2030. But on a more national level, it's important to localize the finance that's going towards rocket launches that are for UK purposes, and that will help everybody in all industries across the nation. It's also great for the environment because it will kind of eliminate that need for additional fuel to transport launch materials. It's sort of a multifaceted beneficial agreement for us, and we're really excited to work with them. We had the opportunity talking with the Saxofort Bayport in various uh, programs. You mentioned 16 launches by 2030. We have end of 2021. There is some time to grow that business into that scale. That's interesting to hear these numbers. But on that note, what is the status of your rocket developments? Yeah, so at the moment, we're currently working on, it's part of our de-risking program. So we have our suborbital um, Skylark L, which we're looking to launch soon. And then at the end of 2022, hopefully we will be launching our orbital vehicle, Skyrora. Excel. So throughout the past few years of the company, we've been conducting several static fire engine tests and preparing all of those, you know, sort of systems to get ready for the actual launch so that hopefully everything goes to plan. And as of right now, we're on schedule and we can't wait for that to happen and get all of these things moving and really champion that space sustainability a thing that we've been talking about this whole interview through actual launches. I'm super excited to see that end of next year will be pretty busy in orbit. Many companies are about to launch to have their maiden flights for various rockets. It will be interesting to follow that up, and we obviously will do. So my last question are coming back to the in-person event in Bremen. What have been your takeaways from that event? Yeah, absolutely. For me, that was actually one of my first major space conferences I've ever attended. So I think on the scale of going from two years ago, having nothing in person, to also being at that conference and also having it be my first one. It was truly an incredible experience. I loved speaking to all the different types of companies there, from small ones to large ones. And something that I noticed throughout was the level of collaboration that was present, which I think is quite unique to the European and Scottish space sector, because it, when you have these huge companies in the U.S. that have developed their launch practices over many years and they're quite competitive, there's not that same sense of camaraderie and working towards that one goal of growing the space sector together. So I noticed that quite a bit at the conference, and I'm really excited to see that continue in the coming years. Cool. Thank you very, very much, Nikki, for this wonderful interview, and good luck to you and Skyrora for your development. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for listening today. If you want to stay on the pulse of space, visit our website, our mothership, at spacewatch.global and subscribe to our newsletters. But of course, don't forget to become a Space Watcher. I'm Tos Screening, CEO and publisher of SpaceWatch.Global, your independent perspective of space. Mm -hmm.